Hello guys and welcome to the first part of my 3D platformer tutorial series in Unreal Engine 5.0. So in this series we are going to be creating a 3D platformer based on Super Mario and Crash Bandicoot. And it's going to be like a little series where we are going to be taking a look at many of the aspects we need to make in order to create a 3D platformer. By the time this is posted to YouTube, the entire series is probably already on Patreon. So if you want to access the full series immediately, go and check out my Patreon tiers so that you can have full instant access to this series and the project files. In the first part, we are going to be taking a look at how to create a coin collecting system and this can be used to collect any kind of currency. Before we get started, do not hesitate to hit the like button to support this series and the channel and subscribe if you are new because there are lots of cool Unreal Engine and game dev videos coming soon and you can also check out my game in the workplace of madness. It is an HD 2D horror game and by the time this is on YouTube the Steam wishlist page is probably already up so go and wishlist my game. I would really appreciate that. So as usual we are going to be starting our project by launching Unreal Engine 5.0.1 so this is not the early access version and I'm going to create a new project called Crazy Mario and I disabled the starter content because I do not need it but in case you do go ahead and enable it. I don't really care and if you start the game and give it a try you can see that the unreal engine 5.0 starter project is really much much better the animations are better and it has like ik so we are going to be using that to our advantage anyway we need a coin model so go to opengameart.org and find the 3d pirate coin or any 3d model for a coin so go and download this this is entirely free and you can sell it in your game Anyway, this is good for the tutorial, so create a brand new folder for your 3D assets in the content folder and import the coin into it. So just drag the coin and drop it there. Depends on your import settings and the model, so import it and import the diffuse map and the normal map. And you can go open the material and edit what you need. So you first place the diffuse map and then the normal map and then you just connect it to the base color and the normal to the normal and it will look already much better. So you also need a constant and set the value to 0.1 and connect it to the roughness so that you can make it more shiny. Also you can copy and paste the constant and place it in the metallic and change the value to something like 0 0.8, 0 0.7 and place the coin in your game, you should see that it is extremely small. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale it for now and just check it how it looks in the game. So hit play and go to the coin. But if you go and touch it, you know, it has collision and um, you just can't pick it up because it's just a static mesh. So in order to add code for it, you wanna go to the blueprints folder and I like to move it out of the third person folder to the content folder. And that is because I like having my blueprints very close. So inside of the folder, right click, create a new blueprint class and choose actor. And I called it collectible coins. You can call it whatever you want. It's not really that important. Anyway, open up your blueprint and this is the blueprint editor. So in the components, you want to create a static mesh component in order to be able to display the coin static mesh. So just rename it to mesh and for the static mesh in the details panel, you should choose your coin. So pirate coin it is. And um, this scale is going to be messed up because this coin is way too small. I changed it to 5, but later I changed it to um, 20, I think. So just go and change it to 20 right away if you're using the coin. And yeah, it will look like this. It looks okay. I like it. So you want to rotate it because it's upside down. So that's much better. So now that your mesh is ready, what you want to do is you want to rotate it kind of like a platformer where um, the coins actually rotate before you pick them up. So just drag the mesh component into your event graph and drag out of it and add relative rotation and for the extra rotation you want to drag out of it and type make rotator and what this will do is it will rotate your static mesh only once to a certain direction in a certain axis so for now we are going to be going with 0 
on the z-axis and if you connect this to the event tick it will keep happening very constantly so that it will keep happening and your coin will just keep rotating if you place the coin actor instead of the static mesh inside of your level and you can see that it's still very small so this is where i went back and actually changed it to 10 first but then i changed my mind again and changed it to 20 as you can see and it's much better like this and you can see that the coin is actually rotating perfectly so before we add anything else promote the z to a variable and this is going to be called the rotation speed and this is how fast your static mesh is going to be rotating i think 0.5 was way too slow so i changed it to one instead which is double the speed you can feel free to experiment and look at other games how fast the coin is moving and just make it the way you want it if you actually want it to rotate in the opposite direction you actually need to use minus um, values so minus one minus uh, five minus 0 0.5 and it should rotate to the other side but I believe um, rotating like this is the default and as you can see right now we actually don't pick it up when we touch it and instead we can actually stand on it which is not what we want so first we are going to go back to our mesh component and we need to change the collision so that you cannot touch it anymore and it doesn't have a collision so just search for collision in the details panel and for collision preset just go and choose no collision and if you give it a try right now you can see that you can no longer touch the coin so now we want to be able to pick it up so go and add a sphere collision component to your actor and this sphere collision is going to be what you touch in order to pick up the coin and destroy the actor so rename it to pick up radius and then go to your event graph select the pick up radius Right click, add event for pickup radius and add on component begin overlap. Then drag out of the other actor and type get instigator. This is the node you want. This is going to be determining, you know, who picks it up because um, in case you have multiplayer, um, the player who's going to pick it up is going to be the one who's touching it. So this is the instigator and then cast to the third person character and this is how it should look so right now we have actually cast it to the third person character in order to give them a coin but we actually do not have any coins or any place to put the coins in like no wallet so what we are going to do is we're going to go to the third person character and you want to create a brand new variable and this variable is going to be coins so this is the coins that we have with us inside of the character and you want to change the variable type to integer because integers are just solid values they cannot be like 1.5 they are either one or two so go back to your coin actor and get coins from as third person character and then press the plus button and you should have the increment node so the increment automatically adds only one to the value that you have so we are going to be adding one each time we pick up a coin but right now if we actually go and give it a try there will be no number to check so what you want to do is right click print string and then in string connect it to the green output of the um, increment node and if you press play and go give it a try you can see that at the upper left corner that the number is increasing every time you touch the coin and that is not something that we need because we want to add only one when we pick up the coin and we want the coin to no longer exist since we picked it up so what you want to do is just add a node called destroy actor and the target is the self so right now when you pick up the coin you can see that the number increases and the coin disappears so at that point i can see that my coins actually work and i decided to put them all over my level just like a normal 3d platformer and you can see that i placed them everywhere and it was really satisfying to do so it really felt like making an actual game um and 
you know, there's now a goal to actually pick up the entire coins and it's no longer just a blank project. And you can see that when I tried it, every time I pick up a coin, the number of coins we have is increasing. So it works exactly as I intended, but there are a few edits I want to make and you will see them right away. But just check out the test over here and at that part <laughs> I couldn't reach that place. So anyway, uh, I went back to the coin actor and what we want to do is we want to rotate like just hypothetically if we want to rotate each coin in a random direction either left or right you can actually do so so from the z-axis of the make rotator node you want to grab a select node and it should look like a pitchfork and the index should be a random ball this will pick up either true or false randomly each time and false should be 1.5 true should be minus 1.5 or the opposite it doesn't really matter but as you can see it doesn't actually work in my case and that is because we are actually doing it in the event tick and it's happening every single time so that shouldn't work uh, you should add an event begin play and this will happen when you start your game so we want to set the rotation speed based on if that is true or false when we start the game so create a set node for the rotation speed and cut the select and random boolean and connect them to it and then the rotation speed should be connected to the z-axis again of the make rotator you know this part is really optional and i don't think this is how 3d platformers actually work i don't think um each coin uh, rotates in a separate direction but i just wanted to add it as a little extra so you can either follow this or just look at it and try to understand it and it doesn't really matter if they rotate or not but as you can see it works just as I intended. So right now what we need to do is we need to make a variation of the coin that actually adds two instead of one to our wallet. So we can just right click on the coin actor and create a child blueprint class. And I call this one collectible coins double. And you can see that the child actor is basically the same one. So in order for us to add two instead of one, we want to get rid of the increment because it only adds one value to your integer. So instead of it, use the add node and this one should add a certain amount to your variable instead of just one specifically and promote that value to a variable called coins to add and you should determine this when you start the, the other coin as well for the parent actor i actually forgot to make the value something larger than zero so it didn't work right away but anyway next you want to drag out of your as third person character and then set coins and you want to set the coins that the player has connect the target to the character i forgot to do that and connect the coins to oh yeah actually i made an error over here also and i went back and fixed it just forget about it for a bit go back to your coins double actor over here what we want to do is when we start the game we want to set the coins to add to be two instead of one so just set coins to add to two and you have to search for it in the nodes browser instead other than that we want to change the material to be more shiny so instead of this material which i've previously made we are going to create a copy this part is also optional you do not have to do it anyway uh, just right click duplicate and um, create a new material instead of that one though what we're going to do is we're going to add a value to the emissive color so copy the constant and uh, change the value to be to be five and connect it to the emissive color you can see that it doesn't look as we want it so instead of that drag out of the rgb of the diffuse map and connect it to a multiply node and connect the constant and you can see that it is the same material but slightly shinier and you can see the difference over here now go back to your coins double actor and you want to set this the material to be that so select the mesh go to the details panel and set the material perfectly next we want to try putting it in our game so instead of those two we are going to be adding the double coins i just made a small edit to my level in order to add some gameplay into it 
and added a few coins over there. So if you go and give it a try and touch the double coin, you can see that the value is actually zero and it doesn't work. And that is actually due to the thing that I forgot. So yeah, just don't mind that. Let's just go back and fix it. In the default um, coin actor, this is the part I messed up. I forgot to connect it like this. So make sure it looks the same way and connect the plus to the um, set coins. That way, this is the value that you are connecting to the set coins. Also, you make sure that the um, coins to add variable is editable so that you can edit it whenever you place an actor of this class because, you know, it's just fun to be able to edit it in the actual viewport so just go and try collecting some coins you can see that it works again and if you go and try to collect the double coins and over here i just put this um, crate in order to be able to get up there and you can see that it actually works perfectly so that was how you create coins i really hope it was useful and that you enjoyed it i tried to make it a very quick video in order to make it short and not waste too much time if you guys have enjoyed the video do not hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe if you are new to the channel and if you are watching this on youtube you can get access to the entire series on patreon so go check out my patreon if you'd like to and support the channel if you can. I really hope you tune in for the next part. I will see you in the next video. Take care, have a great day and bye.